everyone, my name is New. Coraline might be the movie most people agree was sold as a children's movie, but was probably too terrifying for most kids. I'm a self-labeled spooky gal, so I've always loved this movie. I've seen this project done a few times already on YouTube, but today we're going to be making a doll of myself inspired by the movie Coraline. If you have seen the movie, you would remember the beautiful eerie opening scene where the other mother is crafting a doll to spy on Coraline. I rewatched the movie recently and it got me thinking about how I wanted to make my doll. First step to this project was brainstorming a concept. There was actually a couple of different ways I could take my doll and I dutifully lay awake at night stewing over all the possibilities for many nights. <laughs> After much tossing and turning, I narrowed it down. First is probably the most obvious and true to the movie and that's what I'm calling the surveillance doll. Other mother crafts a doll identical to Coraline in order to spy on her and discover what troubles Coraline, better to lure her away from her parents and into mother mo uh, uh, other mother's <laughs> sticky web. If I were to choose to replicate this concept, I would make a doll identical to myself, copying one of my own existing outfits so she could be my little button eyed twin. I've already crocheted a little doll of myself for my mom's birthday, so I didn't really feel like doing it again. What if my doll was created by the other mother to show a version of herself that was the most appealing? A kind of lure to draw me into other mother's world and make it so I never want to leave. So I'm calling this concept the lure. This doll represents a perfect life, the version of yourself and your future that's most appealing to you. As you can probably guess, it's this concept I'm going to go with. So my next step is to consider what kind of life would the other mother use to lure me in? What would the lure look like? The first thing that comes to mind was lots of beautiful tattoos, also long, unruly, colourful hair. And to imply the lure version of me has plenty of time to work on personal projects without worrying about money, I want her to have intricate handmade clothes. So with that established, let's get on to making our doll. I realize this is kind of a cop out, but I made the body of the doll off camera. Reason being for as long as I've been making crochet dolls, I've been using a pattern I bought online from a very talented crochet artist called Jade. She has a YouTube channel called Sweet Softies and I bought her pattern for the 12 inch slender doll base and modified it for my purposes. I made the original pattern and liked it because it was all long and lanky and I felt like it would translate well to a creepy little doll with the right touch. However, if I wanted to go ahead and make a Malice or Zell doll of my friends later, I wanted to attempt to make my doll look a little more plus size compared to them. So I added a few stitches in the arms and legs and tummy area to make the dolls look a little different. I don't think you'll end up seeing all that much under the clothes, but I tried. I don't want the law to look like a totally different person, so I attempted the plus size thing. Next time I try crocheting a more plus size looking doll, I'll definitely play with the proportions a little more though. I have to confess, the way I went about making this doll was very much all over the place. I started making a tiny shirt using an old stretchy shirt of my own. I didn't have to worry too much about shaping the shirt to the doll's body since I like wearing boxy comfy shirts and the fabric is stretchy enough to get around the curves of the doll. Then I crocheted a teeny tiny cardigan for my doll using spare yarn from my Marvel crochet project. This is the teeniest, tiniest, sweetest little thing and true to life it's proportionately all wrong. <laughs> I frequently make part cardigans and vests that are too big in the top and fitted in the bottom so this tiny doll cardigan is very on brand for me. I kind of wanted to make a square patchwork cardigan for her, but ultimately I decided to go with this blue since I actually really hoped to make a sky blue cardigan with clouds for myself one day. The idea of wearing a sky themed cardigan with a rainbow skirt or dress has been brewing away in my head sponge for a while now. The clouds were embroidered using white yarn that I separated down to just one strand. I also coloured in some white lace using a fabric marker and trimmed it down then attached it to the collar of the shirt at this point. But I end up 
cutting it off later since I also wanted to include some necklaces and things and this lace collar ultimately interferes with that and doesn't look right. After the cardigan I patterned and cut out a full circle skirt from leftover tulle from another project. The skirt is going to require some painting so I'm going to come back to it later. Gotta wait for the stars to align to dig all my paints out of my craft boxes. It's a whole process I need the crafting goddesses on my side for. Initially I ordered some buttons online that were 13 millimeters and they were perfect and black but not creepy enough. I wanted full creepy so I ordered some bigger buttons and while we wait for them to arrive I got to work marking out the hairline for the doll in relation to the eyes. At first I thought I wanted to give my girl little space buns and long curled hair so I marked out the hair in such a way that I had nice straight sections and could pull the hair up neatly. I did a fantastic job keeping to my neat little parts, pinning the strands in place, then sewing them down, similar to how the other mother appears to have sewn hair on the original doll to simulate braids or wavy hair. Um, unfortunately, the buns were really big, as much as I adore that. It wasn't the creepy vibe I wanted for my Coraline style doll. The dolls in the movie had weirdly square heads and very flat hair. I already have a kind of cute round head for my doll and I don't really intend on keeping the hair super flat, but I want this to still kind of summon the idea of the doll in the movie so I can't stray too crazy. I ended up playing around with the hair and adding far more as the project went on. I tried these fun ponytails and then started picking apart the wound yarn so it looked like she had wavy hair. I then did a bunch of mucking around with her hair off camera and it keeps changing as the video goes on so let's check back in on that later. I finally mounted the energy to dig out all my acrylic paints and laid the tool circle skirt out on some plastic and then started putting splashes of paint all over it. I've seen this a lot on Pinterest and I thought it was really pretty. Again, I want to make a life-size new version of this skirt one day so it seemed appropriate for the lure doll. I also took this time to paint the bigger buttons I bought for her eyes. You can't really see on screen but they're a really dark khaki green and I wanted them black. This also taught me that I really need to get some more acrylic black paint because this tube has gotten really goopy and thick on me. I've been letting my poor little doll roll around without pants on for too long so I finally fashioned an underskirt for her since the tool is obviously completely transparent. I just did this by taking some leftover lace and painting it black then sewing it into a tube. I also had to give it little dots at the top to fit the waist but this was definitely one of the easier parts of her outfit. Then I spent an absurd amount of time gathering the skirt down to a ribbon waistband which I later decided I hated and replaced anyway. The lesson I have to impart from this experience though, and I'm sure many a doll customizer has said this before, but you really have to think about the weight of fabrics when you're making tiny clothes. The ribbon was far too thick and gathered down to bunch really grossly on the doll, hence why I ended up ripping it all apart and trying again later. I also mentioned earlier I wanted this doll to have little tattoos, and I figured on a crochet doll the best way to do that would be to embroider them on. I could have tried painting them, but since the surface of the crochet skin is so textured, I worried this would look strange. I used a matte black cotton to sew, to sew, to sew some random designs on her arm. None of these really match any of my real life tattoos since I don't actually have any heavy black tattoos but I figured too much colour in thread on such a tiny scale would become confused very quickly and as the cat says in the movie the other mother is kind of lazy. She only creates as much of the world as it takes to fool Coraline initially so I figured she wouldn't do too much more research into it beyond okay tattoos good. I was going to tattoo both arms but the time crunch means I stopped at one arm. <laughs> it's going to be covered by clothes anyway and I actually only have one arm tattooed at the moment so it kind of works out. I also didn't end up doing the second arm because this process is very tedious. I went around each outline three or four times and it still looks pretty sloppy and all over the shop. I like a good tedious craft but not when the outcome is still not great. I ended up giving her a moon because I'm a cancer baby, a snake because I'm a proud Slytherin. A moth or butterfly thing because I don't know I wanted to and then she has a bad love tattoo because Key's solo album came out while I was making her and bad love is an absolutely legendary bop. 
Then October rolled around and I got the cutest mug ever. Very pleased with this purchase, even if I definitely didn't need it, nor was it an admissible expense on this month's budget. <laughs> I decided at this point I hated the mini cardigan. I just think it was too small for the doll and it looked fine, but if this doll was meant to be luring me in, she had to be wearing a big squishy oversized cardigan. This teeny cardigan was made with a 2.5mm hook and a single strand of thread. Very tiny and tedious. Very adorable and squishy. While I'm replacing things I've already done, I also replaced the waistband on the skirt with a matching tool strip. And instead of embroidering the clouds onto the new cardigan, I painted them on with acrylic paint. For her last item of clothing, I made her a cloak. Cause I'm in camp cloak, and I really think we should ditch puffer jackets and go back to cloaks. But yeah, I plan to go full eccentric weirdo the older I get, so my future plans involve trudging around my property in a cloak come winter. I just cut a giant circle out of this silvery bluey grey stretch velvet from my fabric stash. I wanted it to be black or at least a darker grey, so I watered down some black paint and painted it on. It mostly worked. You can't paint it on too thickly, it'll make the fabric too stiff, but I'm pleased with the darker, more charcoal-y grey it ended up being. I used white, silver and gold to paint on some stars. Ideally, and if I were to make this in human size, I would embroider stars and constellations, but I don't know. I always want to give my projects 10,000% and a part of me wishes I'd sat and embroidered constellations and beads and things on this cloak. The war between wanting to do things as thoroughly as humanly possible versus efficiency wages on within. I then cut an opening up one side, hemmed the neckline, and hot glued some pretty lace to the hem. I thought about making it black, but ended up liking how the white looked against the grey. I then hemmed the front opening by hand and added some jump rings to the top of the opening to allow for a purple thread and some beads to act as a closure. I made her some very simple dangly necklaces using beads and chains from my stash. Nothing too crazy since there's already a lot going on in the outfit. I finally came to a conclusion about the hair that just involved stitching it down and then using the front bangs to cover the stitches and some butterfly quilting pins to hold the end back. Then I finally sewed her creepy button eyes on. I made her a crowd of bead flowers using a very thin jewelry wire and some seed beads. In hindsight, purple wasn't the best choice given her hair is already purple, but I also didn't want to incorporate too many colors. Honestly, I kind of wish I'd chosen greys and silvers for the flower crown since as rainbowy as the skirt is, I wanted to not go too insanely colourful since the colour palette of the original Coraline movie isn't necessarily insanely colourful. I used the same butterfly pins as earlier to hold the flower crown on her head. Using a tiny amount of matching yarn, I basically made a single stitch nose which I don't know if I'm sold on the nose but here we are. Then I very creepily sewed a line across her face to resemble the way the other mother sews her dolls shut in the movie. I contemplated adding lips or something because the Coraline doll in the movie appears to have little lips painted on, but again, the downside to choosing to do this with a crochet doll base is I can't really easily paint or even embroider details onto the doll. And with that, I think I'm pretty much finished. So now I think it's time to introduce her to you. One night, when I was coming home from work very late, I found a package waiting at the front gate. It didn't have an address or any information on it at all, really. Only my name. I took it inside and found the sweetest little doll. Is it meant to be me? She's so sweet and creepy. Such a thoughtful gift. I wonder who made her. She has purple hair like me and, well, it's kind of weird. She has a little cloud cardigan I've been thinking about making and, one of those twirly skirts I wanted. I don't think I've ever told anyone about that. Maybe Malice saw my Pinterest board or something. I set the doll on my desk when I went to bed. When I woke up this morning, she was on my pillow next to my head. Weird. I must have knocked the desk while I was sleeping. She has so many little accessories and clothes. I wonder if I can take them on and off. Maybe I could make her another outfit. I keep having weird dreams lately about mice and tunnels. I'm probably just tired from work, but I'm almost sure the doll keeps moving. 
I hope you all enjoyed my creepy Coraline-inspired doll. Have a happy spoopy Halloween, everyone. Bye-bye.